Hello there. My name is Miles with Compass Tools and this is a short video uh, describing simple data collection with uh, Trimble's TerraSync software. Here you can see I have TerraSync loaded. I'm currently using a Geo 7X um, to use TerraSync. Um, first screen that you'll see in TerraSync is the Skyplot screen. Um, this gives you a quick snapshot of uh, your location, um, your height, and also what satellites you're tracking. Currently I am tracking a good amount of satellites um, with an SBAS correction um, being applied. I am currently indoors so I'm not getting the best possible accuracy. Um, you might see the, my accuracy um, indicator up here in the top right of my screen bounce back and forth. Um, but I am connected um, so now I can go ahead and start mapping. First thing that you'll want to do um, in order to plot points, lines, or areas is set up a data file. So um, hit that top drop down menu in TerraSync and you'll see that you have five tabs map, data, navigation, status, and setup. Um, after our setup is complete and we have all the settings that we like, um, next thing to do would be create that data file. So click on data, that will bring you to the uh, create new data file screen. Just fill out your options here. File type, it's going to be rover. We're not using this as a base for now. Uh, my location is going to be my default location, which is just the My Documents TerraSync folder. And I can give it a name Data Collection. And then you can choose a data dictionary that you've uh, chosen to use. Uh, TerraSync will automatically have a generic data dictionary. Um, that you can choose. If you haven't loaded one for yourself, it just contains a um, generic point line and area feature with a, a simple comment field in each one of those. So, um, But if you have loaded over a data dictionary, like I have moved over this master utilities data dictionary, I'm going to go ahead and choose that and then I'll hit create. Um, TerraSync has a setting in it to um, confirm the antenna height. You can turn this on or off um, <clears throat> but it's just a fail-safe um, so that TerraSync knows um, if you are particularly concerned with your height values or your Z values, you want to make sure that you put in a height here. Uh, and typically this is the height um, from the bottom of the, or the distance between uh, the bottom of the receiver and the ground. So it'll tear off that, uh, that distance and you'll be left with a height that is more representative of the ground's height instead of the Trimble's height. Um, so I'm about oh five foot nine on a good day, so I'm gonna go five foot here because um, that's about where I'm gonna be holding my receiver. Um, and uh, TerraSync is smart enough to do that calculation for us, so I'm just gonna enter five FT and OK, and then uh, you'll be presented with this data collection screen. Uh, so this data collection screen um, is where you go to collect data. Um, it will have all of the features that you have created in your data dictionary and as well it will have uh, a generic point line and area features that you can create just in case you forgot to add something into your data dictionary. But let's talk about um, how to collect a point, how to collect a point feature. There's three standard geometries um, when you're collecting or mapping. Uh, those are points, lines, and areas. So let's talk about points first. Um, if you hit your options button up here in the top right, you'll notice that you have a couple of options here for log now or log later. Um, I'll show you what log now does and then I'll show you the difference with log later. I normally like log later, um, but I'll show you the difference. So if we have it set to log now, and let's say I have a gas valve here. So I have it highlighted on gas valve and I'll hit create. Log now means that as soon as I hit create, it's going to start collecting features up here that red bullseye in the counting positions is indicating that I have now collected uh, 15 positions um, that are going to be averaged into this point. Generally speaking, we like to tell people to collect anywhere from 15 to 30 positions or so, um, depending on your GPS environment, whether you have a clear view of the sky or maybe if you're blocked by a, some trees or an awning or buildings, stuff like that. Um, but I'm just going to cancel this feature real quick and I want to show you the difference between log now and log later. If I hit log later and hit create, 
my feature now starts off paused up here instead of counting automatically and right away. Um, and I, I tend to like that a little bit more. Um, that way I can ensure that I get over the feature that I'm wanting to um, wanting to collect. So for instance, this gas valve here, um, it'll give me time to get set up. And then once I'm over that gas valve, um, I'll just go down here to the bottom right and click on log. And that will start logging that uh, red bullseye in positions up here. Um, one, while it's collecting the geospatial aspect of this point, um, I'm going to attribute it. So this um, data dictionary that I've loaded on here contains some attribute information about this gas valve. So I'm just going to answer these questions here. Five feet. Valve number, let's say that's... All right. And once I'm done um, answering all my attribute questions here, I should have um, collected enough positions up here to quantify a good average. So, um, in fact, 50 positions is more than enough. Features stored up there at the top. That's what you want to see. So I've created that gas valve um, with all that attribute information. If I want to go look at it, that top drop-down menu has a map tab on it that I can go look. And there's my point that I've collected and that red X is me. Uh, it's bouncing around about one ping every second um, just because that's an imperfect location. So, um, But back to the data tab, let's talk about uh, lines or area features. Um, lines and area features are uh, very similar to um, points, um, but also um, there's a couple of slight differences. So let's say, for instance, I'm creating this gas line here. And I already have mine set to log later. Um, you can choose whichever you like, but log later is the one I normally go for. So gas line, and I'll hit create. And you'll notice it starts out paused here, up in the top right. So once I'm going for my gas line, um, let's say I'm going to walk it. And let's say it's not buried yet, and it's still in the pit, um, so it's visible. And I'll walk, walk kind of right on top of it. I'll go ahead and hit log. And then in the top right, instead of that bullseye, you now see a pen or marker uh, writing, and then you'll see those positions counting up. Um, whenever you see that pen, you want to start walking. Um, that means it's streaming your GPS location, so it's connecting every dot. Um, so if you see that pencil writing and you're not moving, you're going to have a bunch of positions that are all connected, um, kind of a big rat's nest sort of looking thing. Um, and we don't want that. Um, we want nice straight lines. So uh, once you see that pencil writing, you want to start moving. Um, there is an option um, to, if you have, um, uh, let's say you have a nice straight uh, pipeline or, or fence or something like that, something that's very straight, um, and you don't want it to stream in because you get a wobble here or there, um, we can add vertices to lines or areas very easily. Um, up here under Options, Let's say I get to one of the corners of my uh, of my pipe, and everything else is straight other than where it bends or or uh, you know maybe does a 90 degree turn or something like that. I can come up here to Options and New Vertex, and that will create. It looks a lot like I'm collecting a point, but I'm actually collecting a vertex. And you can see that here. It says Vertex One Open, Remain Stationary. Once I have collected that vertex, I'll hit Done in the bottom left, and it'll say Vertex Stored. Now I can move on to my next bend or break in the line and do the same thing. Options, New Vertex. And once I'm done collecting this vertex here, it'll say Vertex Store and it'll store or it will uh, snap a dead straight line between those last two vertices that I connect or uh, collected. So. Um, that's just a way of making nice straight line or area features. Um, that feature is available um, whether you're doing lines or areas. Um, I'll hit done and my line feature has been stored. So feature stored up here. That's what I want to look for every time. Um, but area, um, they're very similar if not identical to collecting lines. Um, I can log and it will stream me around my area or I can do options, new vertex. Once I'm done collecting um, the area, once I hit done, 
it will close that polygon and it will create a polygon feature for us. Um, there's no need to go back to your starting point. Um, if it's a straight shot away from where you started, you can just hit done and it will uh, snap those the first position and the last positions together with a straight line. So um, pretty simple uh, data collection points, lines, and areas. Um, if you want to review what you've um, collected, you can either look at it on the map or if you'd like to view it in list view, um, underneath data, go for update features instead of collect features and you'll see a list of um, all the features that you've collected. Um, you can go back and edit them if you want. Um, you can navigate to them if you want um, by setting a navigation target. Um, the You have a wide range of possibilities here with this data now. So that is simple data collection with TerraSync. Thank you for listening and please let us know if you have any questions or um, need any support on this. We do offer training as well, um, certified two-day classes and custom training. So um, give us a call. Um, or send an email to uh, support at compasstoolsinc.com and you'll, um, you'll be able to get in touch with somebody that can help you. So thanks for watching and we look forward to talking to you.